Based in Chesterfield, James Bird runs Coin Op King, where for a quarter of a century, he's restored classic jukeboxes for the UK market. There's been a growing demand here for old school records and jukeboxes, with American firms like Wurlitzer and Seaberg synonymous with the vintage years of rock and roll. James's skill with these retro music machines has brought dealer Shere Khan Yumukji up from London, who's had an item sent ahead that needs James's expertise. Well, I bought something really special to him. It's going to be a bit of a task for him to pull off, but if he does, it's really going to be a classic piece of work. A lot of coin-operated machinery tends to be stored outside in sheds and barns uh, for years, 20, 30 years. By the time you come to repair it, it's either useless, not working, or just buried in rust. So I see you survived here safely. Fantastic, I'm quite excited about this. Do you want to have a gander? Yeah, please. Ah, uh, Seaberg trash can, 1940s. It's actually the early model, this one, the 146. They're quite rare, these things. Where did you get this from? Someone put it away in a dark, dingy garage. Looks like it needs a fair bit of work. You reckon you can work with what you've got there? The wiring's going to need changing. OK. It looks like it might be uh, original, unearthed. Well, maybe a bit dangerous in places. Yeah. Made by the Seaberg Company of Chicago, this jukebox acquired its nickname due to the unusual dustbin or trash can shape. When the model came out in the 1940s, it was used in diners and bars across America, and a cameo role alongside Marilyn Monroe in the film Bus Stop added Hollywood glamour. But this golden oldie is so badly damaged, it hasn't given anyone good vibrations for years. We're going to need new chrome perhaps on here because that's a little bit pitted. Okay. Uh, this should polish up okay. This plastic's definitely been somewhere hot. It's mounted. They're no good. They need replacing. Okay. They're around about $600. Whoa. It's going to be expensive, but uh, how much? How much did he pay? Paid uh, one nine fifty for it. Okay. They look pretty phenomenal when they're done. So I'll leave it in your capable hands. Fantastic. Good luck, my friend. A lot of problems with this jukebox. I think we're looking at maybe a couple of thousand pounds in parts alone, as well as the electronics. There's also, of course, the outside of the jukebox. It's not going to be easy. With sheer Carl Dalton, James hands the jukebox over to sidekick Dave to strip the body down and take out all the damaged parts. You're best using uh, just a little bit of oil just to get these screws, loosen them up, and they just slide straight out, really. With the fascia removed, James needs to find out why the colourful plastic light covers have warped and melted, and he thinks he's found the answer. What we've got here is how the lamp should look at 6 volts. It's not too bright, it's not too warm. If we whack it back up again, you'll see how it was being run, like that. So I'm surprised that the lamp hasn't burnt out, because uh, you can actually feel the heat being given off from here. What we've got in here is a massive collection of LEDs, and these ones really brighten in your face, so I think that's what we need. <laughs> LED lights will serve as a more energy efficient and safe option for this restoration. Here we go. Ah, fantastic. Nice and bright and nice and cool. That can do nicely. James may have addressed the problems with the lights, but bringing this rock and roll dinosaur back to life is going to be a long and winding road. Chesterfield at Coin Op King, James is working on a broken and melted Seaberg trash can jukebox for dealer Shere Khan. After 25 years of working on vintage jukeboxes, James knows all about the history of these machines and the clever mechanisms that make them work. I really prefer these old 1940s, 1950s jukeboxes because they, they tend to be so simple. Um, engineering inside, there's no plastic parts, it's all metal, everything's been so sort of put together really well, I would say. The most impressive thing for me about the Seaberg jukebox here is that it uses one motor. Now, there's a little clutch system at the back here which changes the motor from doing one thing to something else. So what it's doing is it's just moving a record into position. And then when the clutch system moves, it then swaps and lifts the turntable. So one motor 
literally controls everything in the back. It's so simple. The record tray will just come straight out into position, and then a turntable will lift up and push the record onto the needle. The mechanism used in the trash can was simple, but also limited, capable of playing one side of just 20 records. But in 1949, the same company, Seberg, created a new system, the Selectomatic, capable of playing 50 records, which were stored vertically. So let's lift this up, and we reveal here the toast rack system. Now, each one of these records is held vertically, and what happens is, is the player behind there picks up a record, pushes it through to the other side, and plays it on the uh, vertical turntable. Pushing the record onto a moving vertical turntable with a two-sided stylus meant, for the first time, both sides of 50 records could be played. Right, so in the back here what we've got is the Seberg Selectomatic mechanism. What we're going to do is pick a track and hopefully the mechanism will scan backwards and forwards and pick a song. This clever 100-player mechanism allowed Seberg to dominate the market for the next two decades and cemented the company's place in jukebox history. As an early Seaberg, Shere Khan's jukebox is part of this historic brand's evolution, and so all the more desirable. The leather case is so damaged, it's taking double the usual amount of conditioner. And even then, there's no guarantee it will fit back together. Chesterfield, Coynock King James and Helpmate Dave are making progress on Shere Khan's 1940s trash can jukebox. Dave is retouching a crack in the decorative veneer with enamel paint. So I'm using four different colours to try and build up the look of this veneer. It takes a long time to do this, but you will find that you get the right colour match. The next job on James's list is the jammed Symphonola record selecting mechanism. So I think the most important thing in this mechanism here is trying to remove all this old grease. It couldn't move the motor before because we thought it had seized up, but I think it's actually the grease that's gone rock hard on the motor spindle here. So I use a standard uh, degreasing spray here, which tends to melt the grease and makes it easier to get off. So if we keep cleaning this up I think we might be able to try and get this moving and uh, I'm really hoping that the motor isn't damaged fingers crossed it will start to move <sighs> yes actually it's moving now that's fantastic so I'm hoping now under its own power it's actually going to rotate and put the record into position and we should get the turntable lifting up through the record and putting it onto the needle so should we give it a try A successful test there the mechanism now is working all by itself before it was completely greased up we had to get rid of all the old grease which is a real common problem with these old machines uh, they thought it was a great idea to grease the cogs 50 years later of course the grease has gone hard it doesn't move so now it's moving really nice and smooth it all seems to be working as it should so far with the interior salvageable james joins dave to go all out on the exterior got two side pieces He's ordered parts from America, and they've just arrived. But the bit you've been waiting for, original piece of Seabird cloth. Right, let's get these bits fitted, yeah? It's time to get this vintage jukebox fixed so it can rock around the clock. In Chesterfield, Coinop King James is refurbishing a 1940s Seabird trash can jukebox for dealer Shere Khan. He's nearly ready to hand it back, bar one final finishing touch. The iconic Seaberg motifs that fit onto the front. So we've finally found a part of this trash can which doesn't need lots of work on it, and it's, uh, it's the main focal point, of course. I'm really excited about seeing this centrepiece back on the jukebox. It's got amazing chrome for an 80-year-old piece, and uh, I think this is going to look absolutely superb. With the chrome work gleaming, 
James gives Shirkan a call to come and see if his music machine is a boss and over baby or return to sender. When I got this, all it was was just kind of like rusty, broken up jukebox. I mean, it looked like a piece of trash, but I really wanted to save it because it's just so iconic. I'm hoping today when I come here, it's just going to be all shining and, and it's all going to be singing and working perfectly. You right, James? How do you, mate? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, man. I've got you something inside here, but it's a bit dark inside, so uh, just watch your step. All right, mate. Oh, wow, James, what have you got here? Look at that. I can't believe it. You impressed? I'm shocked at how well you've done it. It did take some time, mate, but we've done just about everything to this. Uh, I'm hoping now it should go for another 80 years. I think you need to have a proper look at this thing with the lights on as well, because we've done a lot of artwork on this, made it look really nice. So okay. uh, just pop the lights, see what it looks like in the light. What do you think? Absolutely amazing. Tell, tell me what you did. Polished the chrome up here on the front. A new front panel here, the new grille on there looks a lot nicer. We've added a few new mirrors in the front. Most of them are okay, but not all of them, but I bet you can't tell the difference. You can't. You yeah. can't. Put a new piece of red cloth on, which was really expensive. It was about £75 just for that one piece of cloth. And these side plastics, they were like melted down. Yeah. I remember yeah. how they were. They were so bad. Wow. I think I'll find something like that. When Shia Khan brought in this tube box, it was down in the dumps. Its iconic trash can exterior was melted and shabby, and the mechanism was jammed with grease. Can we have a listen? Well, you've got 20 songs to pick from, mate, so... All uh, right. Yeah, bang all the leaves off. Let's go with lucky number seven. James has performed a complete restoration. He's got the mechanism working smoothly and restored the amplifiers. There we go. Wow, oh, that sounds great. I mean, you definitely can't beat the sound of these. It's 1940s, so of course you get all the crackles of the 78s. Yeah. It sounds perfect because it's just of its time. the chrome, replaced the melted plastics and trademark Seabird cloth, and he's replaced the old lamps with modern LED lights, which are safer but just as funky. See, I know how much you like your disco stuff, so what I thought to what we'd do is, is we could use the original lamp in there, which would have just lit it up, but I thought a bit more bling, so okay. we put a motorised lamp in there, oh. which in the dark looks fantastic. Can, Can we have a look at that? It? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Huh? I love like, looking at the mechanics of the thing. Yeah. It looks absolutely amazing in there. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy, you know, hats off to James. Put some proper elbow grease into that. And then when you put the sound on, it's still got its original speaker. It just sounds so nice. It's like you're sitting in front of a nice warm fire. I bought it for 1950. 1950. Not the cheapest trash can out there, but you can't really find them in the UK. But I think now, I've seen dealers selling these things for anything up to £10,000. I mean, absolute minimum, you're going to double your money. I make more than double on this, I'm sending you a bottle of shampoo. Is that a promise? And that's, that's a promise. So, if we can get this wrapped up, I'll get a man down here, we'll get it down to London and uh, we'll turn it into cash and you get your bottle of shampoos. I like it, mate. All right, mate, Good take luck. care. Safe journey. Thank you very much. So there's been quite a few challenges with the Seabird. It's taken me hours and hours of sleepless nights, but when it's come together and it's all working, it's definitely been worth it.